crochet tutorial for you. So today we are going to be making these really cute 3D butterflies. Flutter, 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 flutter. You can use them for a variety of things and you can really make them in any size that you like if it focuses. Super easy to make. The only stitches that you need to know how to do, or the only techniques you need to know, are magic circle, slip stitch, chain, and a UK treble crochet, which is a US double crochet. And I will be using UK terminology throughout this tutorial. Link to the pattern can be found in the description box below. I've made this one into a cute little hair clip because why wouldn't I? I like wearing things in my hair. And it's flutter, 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 flutter. You can use them as brooches, as hair clips, as applique on various things. You can make them massive, you can make them small. It all depends on what size hook and what size thread slash yarn that you use. That's enough waffling from me, let's just get on with the tutorial, shall we? So today I am using a double knit yarn, a 3.5 millimeter hook. Uh, you're gonna need some scissors and some kind of needle, a tapestry needle, preferably one that fits your yarn through, but obviously you can have a smaller one if you're using thinner yarn. You could, these are very adaptable. So we're starting out with my favorite kind of technique, that was sarcasm. I'm really bad at this and really bad at showing how to do it on camera, but it's the magic circle. Please find a good tutorial for it online to learn how to do it. You will not find a good tutorial here. And then I'm just going to uh, chain one, and there's a fly buzzing around, how frustrating. Uh, chain one, just like, bloop, wonderful. And we've adjusted the focus, go me. So now we are going to start by doing three treble crochet stitches, which is yarn over, insert hook into the magic circle, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the next two loops. So, three trebles, and that's two, and that's three. And then we are going to chain two, so that's just yarn over and pull through the loop that's on your hook. And then we're going to do three more trebles, followed by a chain two. And basically you're just going to keep following this technique. So three trebles, chain two, three trebles, chain two, until you have in total eight clusters of three trebles with a chain two in between and the last cluster also needs a chain two after it because we're all for symmetry in crochet and circles and all of that fun stuff but I didn't think you'd be interested in watching me do the same thing over and over again even if some of you say that my voice is quite therapeutic and is soothing and calming. I can't believe it's that soothing and calming. We'll see. Cool. So, I'm just finishing off my last treble. And then you're gonna pull the magic circle so it's closed. And I hadn't chained two at this point, so now I'm going to chain two. And then you are going to slip stitch into the top of the first treble that you did and chain three. Now you are going to do three trebles, chain two, and three trebles into the next chain two space. Yes? If you are a granny square maker, you will know what the spaces are. And if you're not, and you're just crochet, then you will also know what they are. Cool, keep going, two more. Sorry if you can hear my tummy gurgle by the way. There we go. And then you are going to go on to the next one, three trebles, chain two, three trebles, and once again, you are going to repeat this the whole way around the circle um, although it's not really a circle, it gets a bit deformed and a bit mishmash, um, but that's fine because it will work out really well. You don't want it to be flat. Um, it will work, trust me, when you fold it because I panicked the first time I made these a few years ago. But yeah. 
You're going to repeat that the whole way around, um, except for the very last chain two gap. And I will show you what to do momentarily, very shortly. Oh, split wool, nicely done me, so professional. Cool, so I've just chained two, I'm about to do, so in the last gap, you do three trebles, you chain two, and then you do two trebles. Because you've still got that chain three there from the beginning of the row, so you do two trebles, and then you slip stitch into the top of the chain three, and that chain three acts as the last treble. Now you are going to do eight trebles into the chain two space, eight of them. Yes, it feels like it's not gonna quite fit in, but it does, you just have to mash it up a little bit. Um, but it gives a very nice scalloped edge. Note that you don't chain any at the beginning of the row, you just die straight into the trebles. Which is US double crochet, I'm sure you're aware if you crochet and you're watching this. Almost there. Almost there. I'm not gonna lie, I lost count. I wasn't counting. I got distracted by outside. And then into the next space between the two sets of trebles, you're just gonna slip stitch. Wonderful. And then into the next chain two space, you are going to do another eight trebles. And once again, you're going to repeat this the whole way around. So each chain two space has eight trebles in and between them, between the clusters, um, you are going to do a slip stitch, which is what gives the scalloped edge its edginess. Hmm. Wow. Probably need to nap if I'm honest. Cool. So that's the last one done, and then I'm just going to slip stitch into just the beginning of the row, just where you would, or where you have the rest of the way around. I'm going to finish off my yarn, leaving a tail of about 20 centimeters, because I'd always rather have too much yarn than too little. And then you are simply going to grab your needle and thread it, and then Sew in the tail for the magic circle, from the magic circle, somehow, if your yarn will cooperate with you. Cooperate, cooperate. It's been a long day and I haven't done much talking today, as yet. Cool. And then you are going to thread your needle with the other tail um, that you've just trimmed off. Wonderful. Then you are going to fold it in half. See? See why it doesn't matter that it's not a perfect circle? Gives it its texture and its oomph. And then um, I just kind of go through the stitch directly opposite where the yarn's coming out of. There's, I have no exact science. And then to create a body, doesn't cover this in the pattern, but I wanted mine to have a body. So I just wrapped the yarn round and I thought once would do it and so then I went back through the bottom stitch then I looked at it and thought no. So then I did it again, yeah I did do it again. And then I took that yarn and finished off that by tying a small knot just in the base of the butterfly and then sewed back through my butterfly a little bit but obviously I hadn't decided that that's what I was going to do yet, so I'm contemplating it. <laughs> oh dear. Cool. Go through once, go through twice, give it a tug and a bit of a wiggle. Wonderful. And then finish off the thread by sewing back through some of the stitches. I'm really bad at finishing off crochet. I'm not, I don't do it that thoroughly. You just can do it and hope for the best. And don't forget, each row on this, you could do a different colour, so you can have a multicoloured butterfly and that would be really pretty. And so you're going to trim off the th excess yarn. And then I took that yarn and I threaded that needle again, so I didn't really need to unthread my needle. Um, and I decided to use this for its antennae. So I just went under the yarn that we wrapped around it to make the body. Once again, not the most sturdy, 
of decisions, but works for my purpose. Um, and then I just knotted the yarn where I wanted the top of the antenna to be. It's apparently easier said than done. Here we go, knot, and knot the other end in a roughly the same place, but it doesn't matter because I can just always pull it through to even it out a bit, but yeah. And then trim off any excess. Wonderful. And that's your butterfly complete. You can stick a hair clip through it if you want to. You can stick a magnet on it if you want to. Options. Stick it on a card. But then I also made this butterfly and instead of just using a strand of yarn, I just chained a few and sewed it on that way. So that is another option for you. So now you know how easy it is to make these cute 3D butterflies. Oh, they're so cute and summery. I love them. So now you know how easy it is to make your own cute little 3D crochet butterfly. Don't forget that if you enjoyed this tutorial, to give it a big old thumbs up. Your support means the world to me, and why not hit subscribe? I post a new craft tutorial here in the corner of craft every single Sunday, and then I post bonus videos in the week as well. And you've got two bonus videos this week, although one of them was meant to be last Sunday's tutorial. I got a bit backed up on tutorials, but yes. If you decide to make anything of your very own using one of my tutorials, I wanna see a picture of it. So feel free to post a picture on social media using the hashtag the corner of craft so I can check it out. You can use it on Crafty Mino. You can use it on Instagram. You can use it on Facebook, Twitter. I don't, you can definitely use it on Twitter. I don't know about Facebook, maybe. Links to all of my social media accounts can be found in the description box of this video, along with the pattern, link to the pattern so you can follow along with the pattern as you're following along with the video, if that is something you are interested in. But yes, with all that being said, thank you very much once again for watching and I shall see you very soon in Tuesday's video. Bye. today's bead weaving video I'm going to show you how to make these really cute Harry Potter themed tie necklaces but obviously you can do any tie just you know showing my Hufflepuff pride